a show dedicated to shit that ain't even real. Featuring Dustin Volkman and David the Dr. Parrish. Gary's around here somewhere. Just a bunch of ones and zeros, dude. CGI is taking over, mofos. Welcome to CGI for Photographers. Ah, yeah. Let's get this show on the road. Guys, this is the first show. How do you feel? Feeling good. Feel amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. All right, so CGI for photographers. Dust, I'm putting you on the spot. What the fuck is it? CGI for photographers is a new edutainment show that we're kicking off today, first episode. And it's really going to be a fun time. We're going to be talking about some tips and tricks and uh, some of the stuff that's going on in photography today that could be done in CGI and really just expanding the awareness that we can really do anything in the 3D slash CGI world and start to implement that into our photography skills. So yeah, Dave and uh, Gary and I are going to be talking and hopefully having a fun time with you guys. Plenty of laughs and uh, awkward moments. I don't know who that character was that you just did, but it wasn't Dusty V that I'm used to. Where did where did that come from? <laughs> Cosplay. Yeah. So. I don't know what you're talking about. Awkward moments for the awkward awkward moment moment for the show. So okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dustin, thank you, thank you for putting that on. Um, I think, from my perspective, what what I wanted to to put together as we've been making this series of tutorials on CGI that's coming out very soon, there is just so much to this side of creative image making, creative you know, art making of, of utilizing CGI a little bit or a lot. So we wanted to put together a weekly show where we all got together since we can't be together physically as much as we thought just to talk CGI. Yeah. So hopefully we're going to have other people on the show. Um, we've got little segments kind of designed. David will show up, you know, and, and be there. Dave, what do you one? think? Yeah, Dave, yeah, definitely. You, Dave, you've got, uh, you've got, yeah. You've got two minutes to respond. Go. Uh, what is the question? That, yes. Go. Two minutes. Yeah. Yeah. On the well, I, know, I'm super excited. I think that like we're going to kick around and, and explore ideas of exactly how CGI integrates with photography. Everybody here has some level of photography background, but we don't all have CGI background, which is why we rely on Dustin. But we've been exploring it now for months, and I think what we're really going to start doing here is kicking around, regardless of your genre, sort of how CGI could be applicable to your work. And just thinking of things like, you know, learning opportunities. What's what's the new CGI term that we're exploring or maybe talking about right now? Um, looking at people's work and being like, hey, this, this could have been CGI. Uh, and really discussing with Dustin and, and myself and you just like exactly how we think that could be CGI and how it would have played out if it would have been. That wasn't the question, David, but that was yeah. a good answer. Oh, well, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. no, I was just messing yeah. with you. Um, you know, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's you're like absolutely the vice right. President, the vice president's I'm, debates, right? You just won't ever answer the question. I know. I'm so excited um, <laughs> to 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 get this tutorial out in the next couple months. Um, we we did something, and I, I kind of want to talk a little bit about it now. Um, not only did we make kind of an intro to CGI for photographers, but we did, we did something else. And we talk about this on the podcast, but we might as well talk about it now. Dave, Dustin, what do you, you guys want to talk a, a little lot bit of about what we did? We might want to be a little bit more specific there. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was... I was vague on purpose. I just want to like in, entice you to talk about something and see what you talk about. Well, I had a lot of awkward moments. So uh, first and foremost, you guys can look forward to the blooper reel because I'm sure all 30 of them are going to be amazing. 
Yeah, so that's interesting. I'll probably see them after you see them, so that'll be a fun watch. And uh, yeah, we're on, on top of the the intro to CGI for photographers, uh, where we're using Cinema 4D as the primary software, and then Octane Render as the render engine. Uh, we're also starting to develop assets. So we'll have Pro EDU 3D props in different rooms and light setups and all types of different stuff that you guys can use to really start your own 3D resource library on things that we might actually use as photographers rather than just finding random stuff on the web. So that's one of the interesting fun parts. I'm not sure if that's what I was supposed to talk about, but we're talking about that. And we're also developing full rooms that are built around very large budget and inspiring creative spaces so that you can essentially shoot a model in real life and then create their entire background for a composite in 3D. So it's not really going to be a software specific thing. So if you're not a Cinema 4D user, these assets and 3D models that we're developing can be used across multiple different platforms and uh, yeah, really aid in your creative venture. Cool. Dr. Dave. So, yeah, so what did we do that was new? I, mean, I think overall what was brand new is we actually got into the realm of CGI. Um, we did that from kind of a specific, what maybe a lot of people would consider CGI-ish stuff. Like we jumped in from the realm of product and kind of moved forward, uh, you know, beyond the basic, here's how, what the program is. Uh, once we started getting into the renders, like we went from product all the way to this 3D realm that Dustin is talking about um, with rooms, with these upscale rooms. What I think as a photographer is so exciting about this is it's really, I don't know, reverse compositing. In traditional compositing, you have to shoot the background and then you have to match the model to that background. And in this case, you can shoot the model and then match the background to the model. Um, so, you know, for me, that's super exciting. It means that I can basically develop concepts after the concept. So with things like Corona kicking in, right? This, this pandemic, I could easily oh, take yeah. old work and turn it into new things, which to me is super exciting. So just diving into the whole realm of CGI in general is just eye-opening and super exciting to me. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually had a, a call with Eric Almas um, about two or three weeks ago, and I was telling him a little bit about what we were doing. And, um, you know, shout out to Eric, because he is the first person that really, you know, in the making of our tutorial with him, taught me how he creates his images that don't really look like composites. They, they look surreal because he creates these environments using his composite techniques. But the interesting thing or the, the limitation that he was adamant about was you always shoot the back plate first. You always set the lighting with where the sun was at and that dictates exactly how he's going to light his subject um, afterwards. So, you know, we go out and we shot back plates all, all over California during uh, the tutorial and then we shot the people to match. But there was always limitations to that. So what, you know, David, what you just said, this is the complete opposite. You can have thousands and thousands yeah. of pictures of people, but then right. create environments that aren't even real. And we kind of joke about this in the title, shit that isn't even real. And that's because right. there is, yeah. there's no limitation to creativity and, and what you want to create. So the cool thing about CGI is... You don't have to spend money on budgets, or, uh, rentals, um, travel, huge crews. You do have to spend money on the, the software and also acquire the models. But one of the goals that we're doing is creating really cool models that we're going to make accessible, uh, super accessible. We're probably going to give a, a, a lot of them away for free since we're making so many. But the, the purpose of this show and the purpose of our tutorial is to completely teach that whole different workflow to photographers. Be <laughs> It's, it's, it's definitely not a simple thing to learn. Um, there, there's a lot of steps, but it's one of those things that, you know, this show's purpose is also to kind of keep people talking and thinking about it so you can, you know, take it a, a bite at a time, so to speak. 
um, which is something I'm just super excited about. So over the next few months, we're going to be making this show, and we are going to be releasing a lot of different parts of the tutorial, which I think brings us to our first segment. David, can you give us some intro music to Dustin's first segment on CGI term of the day? Go. I don't know, because I'm not a musician. <laughs> yes, okay. So the CGI term of the day, until wow. we have graphics and music for that, is IBL, which sounds like a stomach problem, but that stands for image-based lighting. <laughs> Dustin, yes, what is, so. is image-based lighting? <laughs> or Image-based lighting is... I feel like this is I, I with a puppy and a grass field and some flowers. Yeah. So image-based lighting is essentially making use of HDR images, which is stuff that we may be used to shooting as photographers when we're talking landscapes and things of that nature, where we're essentially just shooting bracketed images and then combining them later. But in the CGI world, we essentially use what are bracketed panoramics are like 360 images to create a base for lighting in CGI. So sometimes we can use them and completely replicate the lighting in a certain scenario, whether it's a studio shot or an on-location shot, so that as we're starting to work in the 3D space, we can really just mimic the same lighting that we would have in the real world based off of those HDR or HDRI images. So HDRIHaven.com is an awesome website that you guys can go to, find hundreds, thousands of free HDRI images to start getting used with. And yeah, it's amazing. So real world lighting based off of an image, that's image-based lighting. Yeah, shout out to those guys. They, they've made a lot of that free. HDR, free. HDRIHaven.com. Oh. All right. Guys, should we <laughs> should we do our first segment? Oh, should, should we do the first yeah, segment? Yeah, let's see. Uh... Somewhere, guys. We were just in the computers together, and now we're here. How do you feel about huh. that? We were. It's uh, amazing. It was a quick travel. All right, so Dave, where are we at right now? What is this? So we are in Behance, and that will hold on. That is not how you pronounce that it. That is not at all. How have right. you been pronouncing it? I like to call it Behance. Behance. It okay. sounds so fancy. All right, then stick so, with just consistency. All right, so here we are. This is this is my CGI board. We are going to start uh, showing Dustin some CGI things. Uh, I'm going to start. And Dustin's never seen this. These, Dustin has never seen these. We are just jumping in and I'm asking him kind of his thoughts about various projects. So What the hell is that? So this is called The Truth Behind the Wall. Well, I think this is a commentary on people who do taxidermy. But this is very much CGI probably. You could... Wait, CGI. probably? You don't know if it's CGI? No, it's 100% CGI. How do you know that, though? That thing could be real. I don't know what it is, but... Well, so that's what Dustin's here to, to look at. So we can look at the various Damn. Wow. images in this series. Oh, now I get it behind the wall. Right. Because the head is sticking through Exactly. It. So this is the tax... Oh. This is like the cost of taxidermy is the... is the Man, that's so damn powerful, though. ...thing that's going on here. So, like, here, obviously, you have the bloody carcass uh, but these are the models so right shows you the models afterwards the whole thing all the rooms all the houses are clearly cgi but this is kind of the the zoomed in render all right so fur is a yeah. material texture that's kind of crazy how many different materials textures are there there is it just one uh you probably have a a couple here so there's like a hoof texture too right yeah well I think that what probably or what was probably done at this point is the the model itself was textured. Um, so when we were talking about you know our conversations that we've had on maybe PBR textures or textures that are baked down into a model, 
a lot of times artists will use programs like Substance Painter that they can just import their model and paint right on top of. And so when you're working with fur like this, many times you're working with a, a couple different layers, you know, very similar to how it is with humans. Um, you know, we have our, our color layer, or in this case, we could say our skin that's built into a, a shader set or a material set. And then you have the hair and fur. Why well, that? But like they separate. put grass particles in, you know, from where obviously yeah. where the carcass would have fell on the ground. Bullet holes. They put what animals blood. is supposed to be? I don't know. I mean, it's like, some kind it of just, like a water yeah, buffalo just or something. Nondescript yeah. large animal. But like, that's what I like about it. You don't know what animal it is. It's just a big beast. Yeah. Right. I mean, again, like the entire scene is is clearly CGI, but so do you the think a, is... a model like that is it is this the correct word rigged to move oh. or is it like modeled? For that specific scene. I mean, it seems very static. I don't know why they would rig it, right? I mean, you you can definitely rig it. If, if you're using a software like ZBrush, um, I know you can actually do it in Blender. Cinema, you could go through and, and create a rig as Those well. butt cheeks. Um, <laughs> it's like worn down. Like, you know, it's... Yeah. It's, been, I, it's, 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 it's had an itchy butt and like it's been scooting across like, you know, how dogs do when they get an itchy butt. <laughs> So look at the the hair is missing there. So that, antelopes the, actually. <laughs> that's a detail that like. Deer. You know what I mean? Like, are, is it missing or just white? No, it's just, it's white. just white. It's like a it's white tail. Yeah, it's just. <laughs> I mean, you you can you can oh, oftentimes shit. project the the color of the underlying layer of the skin um, onto the fur, and it's. I mean that that's amazing. I mean, I, I would. They'd probably use ZBrush at this point. Uh, to go through and, and pose the model. All um, right, so who makes ZBrush? That's its own... Uh, Pixelogic. Pixelogic. Yeah, Pixelogic. So they got a bunch of different cool. programs. There's, I, I still haven't quite remembered yeah, so all they of have, the programs uh, from all of the companies because it's all so new. Yeah, they, they, they have uh, ZBrush, which is a, a sculpting, uh, more, more along, the, along the lines of, of digital sculpting, um, you can do texturing in there as well. They they have modeling tools these days that are amazing. Uh, it's just really good for for creating high or low poly assets, especially when it comes to uh, organic stuff. So, I mean, a lot of a lot of the characters that you see in, in films are sculpted with ZBrush, and then you know essentially retopologized, rigged. All right. So who's this the artist? Whole pipeline. It it's just so says crazy. Illusion CGI Studio. Illusion CGI Studio. Okay. Yeah. But I think, I mean, I think it's an extremely powerful... Does it say where they're... Commentary. Based? Yeah. I mean, we can check it out. Yes. Illusion yeah, check, CGI check Studio. Bangkok, Thailand. Did you yeah. just call it Bangkok, Thailand? I said ban Bangkok. I don't think you did. Bangkok, yeah, Bangkok, Bangkok Damn. Let's click on the hippo. That's actually really nice. I mean, while we're here and we're already in this in this, this space. This is the one I chose. Well, while we're here, you're serendipity, you're Dave. In. Like, wow. this, see, this is so damn good. Like, this is the kind of stuff that I creatively just. It says you bring know, your dog never, back. Perfect way. So how would at that point. science diet? Yeah. So, all right. So, how do you think this would be made? Well, I mean, clearly they like to show their models. So this guy's probably got a specialty in animals. It looks like. Or this, yeah. I mean, I think these, I mean, these are made to look. I mean, these these textures and stuff are amazing, but obviously it's made to look somewhat cartoonish. It's not like he was going for a complete. Yeah, but look at these models. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely. It's cartoonish. It's like a blend between cartoonish, but it's look super at that real. hair. Yeah. See, I, I would definitely in, in this case, uh, I would I would definitely be using ZBrush and and say Substance for this to create all so, this detail. So a lot of the artists on on. Say the it. hunts. See, yep. Uh, they're listing all of their so like they usually list their the what they use. They use. So it's I don't see it here. This is obviously an actual. Can you imagine if photographers were like uh, capture one, Photoshop? They use Photoshop for this. You know, like <laughs> it's well, like, it, like a credit. You know what I mean? I find that interesting. That there's like you guys. 
I mean, you do like, you do you know, that. You, you know, talk about the, the, the tools you use. The no, software photogra- you use, photographers you know? do that. I mean, it's, I, I guess it's, they just, just do it with different. lenses. They do it with hardware. Yeah, they do, guys it, do it with right it, because it, because well, they they this is our server. <laughs> this is yeah. our hardware. The hardware you know? is like the just the pure creativity of like what your brain can come up with. You yeah, know? you know, I mean, I could say the same thing with a camera. You know, I mean, I want to give these guys a follow. I like them. Yeah, no, this is this solid. is amazing. Like I'm I'm thoroughly you know, when, whenever we, when, whenever we start to talk about about confidence, right? As as artists. Dang. These like, guys are definitely into like the political statement. Yeah, like th- this is the shit that I look at that I'm just So do you think it's it. them that's into it or they're hired by well, I mean, they're definitely agency they, that, I mean, it looks like they're cl- crediting an agency here. Or Chicago, like uh, is that? that's Philippines, right? Yeah. Wow, you can see the people in the scars. This is the concept image, but look at in the scars. Oh, you can see people and stuff in the scars. That's amazingly powerful. Like you see the tank, see the kids run. That's incredible. Damn. This is why I love art. Oh my goodness. Damn. Have you done anything with skin yet, Dustin? Have you like made? Or do you have you done much from client work with skin, or is it mostly been products at this point? Oh, uh, primarily it, it's primarily been products. Um, so you know, powerful. and then I, I do my my cosplay stuff that's just more environmental. Um, I actually I I used to used to be very heavily into sculpting and and doing you know wanting to maybe get into a, like character design and things like that, and I just shifted shifted goals in my career um this is totally inspiring me to get back to some of that shit though this is amazing like just the just the brains on people man (laughs) to come up with some of this stuff and, and actually be able to execute it is outstanding i'd be very curious to see um you know how many different artists how many different artists they yeah right it would be nice to know what their studio makeup looked like Right. I mean, obviously here, here's a team. Yeah, there it so is. So there's some yeah. level of team right there. All right, we got a client. We got a product. Go, go back. Oh, sorry. Go back. Go back. Go back. Okay. Let's, let's give everyone the shout out. All right. Creative directors, chief creative officer, CCO agency, art director, copywriter, CGI. And there's some level of photography, photography here okay. and an so illustrator. What do you think? All right. Person. So what do you think was photography on this? How do you? I, how do you know? How do you even know? Unless they show you. I'm sure they the shot model. this. This looks like yeah. They didn't show the model on this project, but looks like they probably maybe shot uh, that. They, they, oh, I don't know. That, all right, so the model's on the left over there. Yeah, I don't know. So what the? I mean, you you can also see it, and that's maybe they part of shot the deal the, the, here. The textures and the yeah, materials. Uh, a lot of, a lot of times you'll have. I mean, photographers can shoot concepts. Uh, first of all, sometimes before they get into this very heavily, they'll shoot, you know, some of the creative boards for it. Um, I mean, when you start talking textures and different assets to use for it, photographers come into play for many different things. And, you know, it's it's one of these, I mean, if you scroll down, if you scroll down a little bit, it looks like that one there, they just had, I don't, I'm not sure if that's actually photographed. I thought it was... Do you think the skies? I think photograph? I don't know. Maybe. Well, oh, I mean, oh, the, this is a Qantas thing. Is this Qantas? The photographer. I mean, maybe, like I said, maybe they're shooting the textures. Maybe they're this shooting the back This is back, back in plates. 2013. Yeah. That's like 12 years ago. I was published in 2015, <laughs> but yeah, it says that it's 2000. You guys didn't check my math on that. We didn't check your math because Corona has definitely added years to. Yeah, I don't even know. The okay. equation. All right. Well, shoot. All right. Well, no, that that was that was good. Yeah. That should we, we we should we get back we, into the computer? We went beyond my my thing, but yeah. Let's let's go back to our houses. Let's go back to the houses. All right. Yeah. I'll see go. you guys on the other side. We did it. Yeah. How you guys yeah. feel? Good stuff. How you guys feel? Good. Good. That, that, was, that felt yeah, good. Yeah. Right? 
I thought it was pretty good. I don't know. David, can you Very, say uh, what, what what was what was the platform we were we were reviewing that on the, the oh, website? We were totally in the Hans. The Hans. <laughs> okay, so that was a segment uh, we filmed from the week we were filming uh, the CGI tutorial that's coming out very soon. We decided to kind of make a few segments that we'll be plugging into this show. Um, so, Dusty, you, you were you were saying something about sculpting in the chat while we were uh, while that was going on. What what is sculpting? Uh, so, sculpting in three D software is very similar to sculpting with clay in the real world. Um, my preferred program that I use for this is ZBrush. It's a software from uh, Pixelogic. And it essentially allows you to just really, I mean, use brushes and rather than tools, but you can sculpt just as you would in, in the real world. Um, you can also do that in Blender. You can do it in Cinema 4D. Quite a few different other softwares have the ability to sculpt in them. Um, Blender is actually pretty good. That's one that I haven't personally dove into yet as far as a sculpting platform. Okay. But it, yeah, it, it's really, it's kind of fun. It's one of those things that you can get in and make some cool shit and really just create, I guess, sort of along the same lines as all of the CGI stuff we're, we're talking about. Um, it's one of those other specialties that is good to know the fundamentals of, but at the same time, some people, as you know, say the artists we just saw, are insanely talented, and that's what they specialize in. So, yeah. All right. So that brings us to the next segment. Quick tip of the week. David, can you give us some quick tip of the week music? Go. Um. Boo boo ba cha 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 ba ba boom. I love that. It's amazing. It's amazing. So the quick tip of the week this round, and a lot of these are really going to be more based around the cinema 4D and possibly Octane workspace. Is that something that I'm most familiar with as an artist? Um, so the quick tip of the week is the instant help. So when you're inside cinema 4D and you're trying to figure out what a new tool or button does, you can just hover over that tool or button and press control or command F1, and that's going to pull up all of the help document information on that specific tool. So it's super useful. Doesn't really matter what your experience level is. We always have questions, and that's where I go to find them. I start there before I leave software and say go to Google or anything like that. It's just control or command F1. Yeah, quick tip. There it is. Oh, 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 quick tip of the week was awesome. We did it. Boom. Dang. All right. And then and the next segment is actually David's. This week in photography. David, what happened this week in photography? Well, you know, I was just reading an article earlier that was talking about basically the death of galleries. So photo galleries as we know them, or even a lot of art spaces, art galleries in general. Obviously, we all know the state of the world um, and, you know, that uh, probably a lot of businesses are are suffering and clearly the ones that rely on people to physically go to them um, is, is some of those things that are suffering. So, you know, potentially we might be seeing the death of a lot of art galleries and um, photo galleries in, in the near future. You know, I, I think about this from a photography perspective and, you know, it's, it's really sad that, I mean, there's a lot of people, uh, like we just did a tutorial with Justin Lister. He's a fine art photographer. They, they often rely on these galleries in order to get those fine art pieces out in front of potential buyers. So, you know, how does that impact our industry? Um, we've already had the physical print dying for a really long time. So, you know, I don't know. To me, it's uh, it's sort of something that's happening that's fairly recent, but also maybe ongoing. And I don't know. What do you guys think about it? Is it is it just time for these places to go, or do we care? Well, it's, it's not been? just art. It's not just art galleries. It's museums. Um, I think I saw something yeah. 
25% or a third of the world's art history, culture museums are at risk of closing. Um, my sister, Toby, works for SF MoMA, and they laid off almost everyone, so she's working through the end of the year, but you know, that was a job she's been working at in San Francisco for more than a decade, and uh, gone. Wow. Um, it's funny you bring that up, too. Uh, do you guys ever watch uh, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver? Yeah, occasionally, yeah. No. So I think it was last Sunday they announced um, they are going to be donating twenty thousand dollars to five galleries or, or museums, and will be allowing them. They'll be shipping them these three pieces of art that they've bought in, in different episodes. It's just ridiculous, uh, but they're donating to kind of help museums uh, stay open. But it's a and some museums are also uh, auctioning off and selling like crazy expensive pieces of art yeah that's right well that's you know the, the the bad thing about that is like you know i mean without museums obviously art doesn't become less valuable just because it's not in a museum anymore it still retains its intrinsic value but i think that like i mean think think about how sad that's going to be is that there could be paintings that we've all enjoyed and loved that become private pieces and potentially get stored away in a facility that we can't ever see ever again. Um, and I don't know, I, again, as a photographer, I feel like you know, ultimate goals would be to create a piece of art that resonated so much with people that they would want to put it in a museum one day. Um, really kind of sad to think about that potentially it is not only the death of galleries, but museums in general. That sucks. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree. It's, you about summed up everything that I have to say about that. It's kind of, it's a hard topic. And I feel like that's, I mean, it's been that kind of, I guess, happening as the internet's just grown. Um, you know, people's attention spans and, and the things that we find are hold important have been changing as a whole. And then we have stuff like COVID happen and we get locked away and, it's interesting to see that, you know, a lot of people are starting to value things differently. Um, I think that's been one of the most interesting, you know, parts of, of my personal journey, even with the family, is, you know, certain stores that we were going to, we haven't been back to even that, you know, since they've been reopened. And it's because it we just we lost maybe the, I guess, importance of that specific restaurant versus, you know, trying something new and having a, a home cooked meal together. Um, it, it's interesting. There's been quite a bit that's been changing and uh, I guess we'll see what happens next year. 2020 has been weird enough as it is. Dude, what's on your guys' uh, I don't even know. I don't even want to bring it up. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to say November it. I was going to say November bingo card. 2020 bingo card. It just, you know, it's just not even funny anymore. Yeah, it's not, it's not even funny. You're right. It's, it's just not even funny anymore. It's just it's not funny anymore. That should be the tagline of my number one card is uh, I don't know election. Woo! That's yeah, coming but, through. Yeah, but what, let's, let's not make this. This is a non-political show. Um, yeah. That all right. So in the next segment we have a little uh cgi artist spotlight dustin looks like you got someone that we're gonna give a shout out to here is that still a thing we're yeah do? yeah 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 it's a uh, art station it's a uh, color sponge carlos this this guy i love his work i for a lot of people who don't know art station is an awesome place to go and get inspired by many different types of artists a lot of it is really more geared towards the 3d and cgi industry but you have i mean veterans in the field just throwing up all kinds of different artwork um you have beginners that are on here that are looking for feedback people are posting jobs they have a marketplace for different resources uh it's a really cool place so this is where i go a lot of times to get inspired not just for the 3D and CGI work that I might do, but also photography stuff. So if you guys haven't ever known, I kind of learned photography 
after CGI. And so I transferred a lot of my 3D knowledge and, and the way that I would light things into the photography world. And this is where I got inspired, you know, a lot of times for lighting setups and things of that nature. So Color Sponge Carlos, artstation.com. I don't know. Are, are can we, you share, am, am your, can you share your screen? Yeah, share your screen. Yeah, let's pull cool. it up. And I'll, by next week, I'll figure out a better way to. Okay, then I'll, <laughs> cut, then I'll cut. to, Here we go. We'll make you full screen. Yeah, there we go. So this is uh, one one of the artworks. It's the uh, the Stratus twenty twenty five um, by Color Sponge Carlos here. But he, yeah, it's, it's just I really like the way that that his scenes are put together and the lighting that's here. Um, just a really nice gelled type of look and the details here and things like the rims and the wheels as a whole just look really good. And so, you know, you'll hear me talk a lot about the imperfections in 3D renders. And I feel like he really nailed it, you know, with the way that this glass is looking here on the windshield and we've got all of this stuff here. Now we're not really critiquing, but it's, it's just the, the, the style and the look in these renders is just phenomenal to me. I love the way that they're lit. I love the way that they're composed. And yeah, so this is great. So if we go ahead all the way back up to the top here, let's just drag that. There's a video here. I don't know if we'll uh, be able to hear it. Yeah, so it's pretty That's sweet. Fair. I really, I really love this guy's work. If you go ahead and check out his art station page, artstation.com forward slash color sponge Carlos. It's pretty cool. So that's it. That's it for that one. This is the kind of thing that is constantly inspiring me as far as the 3D world goes. The different compositions, different artistic styles, just like we have in photography. It's all really relatable at the end of the day. So color sponge, amazing work on me. Yeah. What in that the was tight. Of which happened at the end of that video though? Yeah, that was it was like a the camera movement that it was like followed over and very yeah, intentional. Like Blair yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It, it was it was super cool. Was cool. Like this is I, yeah. I got goosebumps when I I didn't, I didn't see the video at first. So yeah, cool. go a sponge, amazing work, guy. That is fantastic. All right, so guys, I think that was a good show, and I think it's only appropriate that we end the show with advice from Doctor Dave about learning new stuff. So, Dave. Oh, okay. Give us give us some advice on on uh, on learning a new thing. How do you do that? Well, I, I mean, it, the biggest thing that I can ever always say, and you if you if you've heard me talk about it before, it's going to be a repeat. But it's actually doing what it is that you are saying you want to become. You know, too many of us get lost in this concept of I've watched a tutorial and now I'm going to somehow download that knowledge. No matter what you do, there's going to be an application base of that 
that skill set. You're going to need to apply it in some way. So just remember, you know, you're going to stumble through those moments. Um, you didn't learn any skill instantaneously in your entire life. Uh, it's going to take some practice, but also remember that all practice isn't created equal. Um, you know, if you do something poorly and you do it over and over again for 10 years, at the end of the day, you're still going to suck. You need to try new practices. You need to try new things, uh, push boundaries, push limitations, be uncomfortable. All of those things are what really leads you to not only become better at the skill that you originally set out to do and, uh, you know, not only allows you to get better, it allows you to potentially innovate the field and change something because you might have discovered a new way to do things. So, you know, also make sure you document all those times that you do stumble into success because a lot of us get caught up in only learning things from failure, but we can absolutely learn things from both success and failure. Back to you guys. Ho, 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 Dr. Dave! Woo! You, that was way better than Jerry Springer's final thoughts. A hundred times better. Shout out to David. <laughs> that wasn't even on the outline, but, you know, whatever. Let's go. I'm going to keep doing that to both of you, so stay on your toes. All right, that's it. We Sounds did it. Good. That All first right, episode done. I'll see you guys in Might the next drop. episode. Yeah, see ya. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all for the show. Join us next week on CGI for Photographers.